Welcome back to Mental Math. So here's the thing about this cubic equation. You could test for rational roots, sure, but there's actually a more elegant path through factoring that reveals something beautiful about the structure. Let's see where that takes us. The real insight here isn't about grinding through calculations. It's about recognizing patterns. Let's start by getting this into standard form. We'll subtract 16 from both sides to set this equal to zero. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We're going to decompose that constant term in a very specific way. Watch what happens when we split negative 16 into negative 8 and negative 8. This might seem arbitrary, but trust me, there's a method here. This decomposition is really just setting us up to group terms in a way that reveals patterns you might recognize. So we group x cubed with the first negative 8 and 2x squared with the second. Notice how two distinct structures are starting to emerge. And just like that, our grouping has revealed something special. A difference of cubes on one side and what will become a difference of squares on the other. Let's tackle each of these groups one at a time. The green term here is a difference of cubes, so let's start there. The formula for a difference of cubes is a cubed minus b cubed equals the quantity a minus b times the quantity a squared plus ab plus b squared. Applying this formula where a is x and b is 2, we get this factored form. Now let's turn our attention to the second term. First, we'll factor out the 2. And look at that. Inside the parentheses, we've got a difference of squares. The identity is a squared minus b squared equals the quantity a minus b times the quantity a plus b. With a as x and b as 2, this gives us the fully factored second term. Now, here's where things come together nicely. Let's substitute these factored forms back into the main equation. When we substitute both factored parts back in, notice what appears in both expressions. The term x minus 2 shows up in both places, so we can factor it out of the entire equation. Factoring out x minus 2 leaves us with the sum of what's left inside the brackets. Now we need to simplify what's inside the brackets. Let's distribute that too. This gives us x squared plus 2, x plus 4, plus another 2x plus 4. Let's combine those like terms. 2x plus 2x gives us 4x, and 4 plus 4 is 8. And there we have it, the completely factored form. Since the product of these two factors equals 0, at least one of them has to be 0. That's the key insight here. Setting the first factor to 0 gives us our real solution, x equals 2. Now let's set the second factor to 0. This is a quadratic, so we can use the quadratic formula. Using the quadratic formula with a equals 1, b equals 4, and c equals 8. Let's evaluate what's under the square root. 4 squared is 16, and 4 times 8 is 32. So the discriminant is negative 16. A negative discriminant tells us the roots will be complex. The square root of negative 16 is 4i, where i is the imaginary unit. To finish the simplification, we'll divide both the real and imaginary parts by 2. And this gives us our two complex conjugate solutions, negative 2 plus 2i and negative 2 minus 2i. Let's take a moment to summarize all three solutions and then verify the real one visually. First, the real solution, x equals 2. And second, the pair of complex solutions, x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i. Let's verify the real solution by plotting the function. The graph should cross the x-axis right where x equals 2. And there it is. The graph crosses the horizontal axis at exactly one point, just as we expected. And that point of intersection is precisely at x equals 2, confirming everything we did algebraically.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this problem, please like and subscribe for more mental math challenges.